in this, in like the interview now and in other um, conversations of my work, it's interesting that it always comes back to animals a lot. Um, and I feel like I'm not an animal artist <laughs> in some ways because I, um, what I'm, I'm as much talking about landscapes and plants and and more about people. But I think in some way animals, are be, I mean obviously animals are symbolically really important in um, human culture. I mean looking at cave art from just about every culture in the world, it's all really based on animals. And people seem to be kind of drawn to it, so I guess in my work it's, um, it has kind of taken on this kind of important symbolic element of my work in a very sort of easy, easy way and then there's sort of almost an emotional well, I think there is sort of an emotional interaction often, especially in the video work where the animals kind of engage with the camera and so it creates this sort of direct engagement, sort of like meeting an animal in the, in the forest. It's interesting that sense of a relationship that you form with the animals. I don't know, I'm really interested in developing that kind of, I guess, relationship with the animals so that it makes them much easier to, to work with as well because if you spend enough time with them and they can sort of do what they want and um, within reason then um, they sort of become very comfortable in the space and that's that sort of comes through in the work too because so they're in the forest and they've actually been living, so they actually were living in there, some of them for for a while, that was sort of part of where they, where they lived so there was um, I guess that sort of sense of comfort and freedom but within a, a contained kind of way. In the research I am doing for my PhD, so I'm effectively talking about a um, developing or identifying a lang symbolic language structure really that we can um, somehow articulate our relationship with nature and how it is changing and, um, and how we can kind of transform that relationship into something healthier. Uh, I guess in my work um, I'm kind of using those sort of symbolic structures and ideas to in some way sort of propose alternatives or um, sort of demonstrate alternatives and suggest alternatives in some ways. And what I'm most interested in this is this kind of, um, this all the work around mourning and grief and, and that in a large part humans are undergoing a lot of grief and mourning for the natural world, particularly indigenous cultures I guess, um, and, and for place, um, but we have no, barely have any language to even conceive that that's a possibility, um, let alone to actually actively discuss, discuss it. I guess it's the general process of my work is um, it often, I'm often thinking about it for a few years actually, like I'll have, there's always sort of some new ideas I'll be having that kind of um, filter away and um, initially I, the work was really based around working in the, the idea of the forest actually and the, the, I guess the symbolism of forest um, and after my especially living in um, Germany for a year and a half I became very interested in European forest and and what that means symbolically in sort of our culture and um, particularly linked through fairy tales and things it's some kind of ancestral link that we have with the, the forest Initially the work was very conceived very differently but then when I started working on it I started the first thing I did was start constructing the forest and start building the building the forest and initially the the idea was there would be sort of a human character in the work and then that got edited out very very early on and but I feel like there was still a sense of the human in, in the work anyway through through the absence in a way but they um, and then I started collecting the animals so it was sort of a two um, two-part kind of process where I was working in the studio on building the forest and then at the same time I sort of spent a few months collecting these exotic looking birds that would end up sort of populating the forest and then but pretty much when it came to filming is when I put the two together. The way I was thinking about the camera and the editing was almost like it's a sort of a remote drone camera going into some kind of area and it's sort of scanning and um, and the, and the birds are sort of interacting with the camera in some way, but there's, um, yeah, almost like it's a, as an outsider, so the viewer sort of becomes an outsider in the work. 